COVID-19 shut down schools and forced children to learn from home. That is one impact of the virus on young people. The other, the health impact, is still developing as this virus is very new. Joining me now via Zoom is Dr. Juan Bernini. He is a pediatric oncologist and medical director of the Vanny Cook Children's Cancer Center in McAllen. Dr. Bernini, thank you for your time. It's my pleasure being here and thank you very much. And doctor, most of the research on COVID-19 has been largely focused on the older population. How does a virus as contagious as this one specifically affect pediatric cancer patients? Now, fortunately, uh, what we know so far about this virus is that in general, the pediatric population has been spare and very few cases com compared to adults have been diagnosed. Um, when it comes to children with cancer, um, also it seems to be the same uh, phenomenon. Um, there are very uh, few children that have been diagnosed across the country with cancer and COVID-19. However, um, we need to be very careful. Their immune system, as you know, for those kids who are receiving chemotherapy, is they are immunosuppressed and they are prone to have more severe, more severe infections and more complications from these infections. And we have spoken to many Valley doctors over the past few weeks who have said some of their patients are avoiding or postponing their appointments because they just don't want to be exposed to germs in waiting rooms. What changes have been implemented at Vanny Cook in relation to patient care and safety? Yeah, and first of all, um, I don't think if there is need for if there is a need for follow up, uh, the patients in general should go and see your doctor. I'm aware of the same phenomenon. A lot of uh, Persons in general are not showing for their follow-up, for the studies, and I think putting those studies, uh, uh, delaying those studies or seeking medical attention can cause more harm than benefit. At the clinic, however, uh, because what the type of diseases we're dealing, which is usually life-training, uh, if you don't provide them with the proper treatment, we'll have continued to operate. Uh, we have made some uh, uh, modifications and um, we have uh, implemented multiple plans to prevent um, for these kids to get exposed uh, to the um, viruses. And doctor, disinfectants have been very hard to find in stores. What is your advice, just basic advice for patients and families in terms of protecting themselves from germs? In, in general, uh, is um, to pr uh, prevent uh, crowd places. Uh, we don't know who you're going to be in contact or run into at uh, the movies, at the mall, at the stores, at the supermarkets. So for sure, prevent to uh, to go to any crowded places. Uh, personal hygiene is extremely important to prevent any type of infections. Hand washing has been, uh, you know, addressed in, in multiple places by multiple media. How to clean your hands uh, for at least 20, 25 seconds, back and forth in between the fingers. That's extremely important. Uh, maintain a good hygiene at the house and wipe out uh, surface. Also prevent any contact with anyone who may be sick or contagious. You know, doctor, this health crisis has created a lot of financial insecurity. Is there any type of financial support available to help families afford continued care for children with cancer? Uh, there, you know, they, we have a social worker in house uh, full time, and she is meeting with families individually. Our clinic, as you know, is a non for profit, and will definitely uh, continue to care of these kids, whether their ability to pay it or not. Uh, fortunately, most of these uh, uh, patients have uh, insurance, uh, but you know, if, if there is no, they cannot pay a copay, or there is no insurance, uh, we're still uh, providing them with the best available care. What's your advice, doctor, for you know families of, with children who maybe aren't your patient? Um, any advice for them? Should they talk to the office manager, see if there's some way that their, a deal can be worked out? Yes, absolutely. There's, they can talk to the manager, the clinic manager, or the social worker. And in most cases, uh, there is a, a solution for any type of problems, and we, we can always help to to these families. We treat the family as a whole. We just don't treat the patient. Uh, our, our, our goal is to treat the family and provide the best care. So once again, uh, if they have no insurance or they cannot afford the care, we'll continue to see this patient for free uh, interoperably. Dr. Brunini, thank you for your time again. Stay safe. Thank you so much, you too.